Hey guys, I'm Mitch and welcome to Challenger Mode. Today we're going to take a look at the latest Valorant patch, that's 0 0.50. And we're going to look down through all the changes that are made, how they affect competitive play and casual play alike. We're going to cover a number of topics from weapon and agent balancing to map changes and any HUD fixes that came through in this update, which are of particular interest to me as a commentator. If you want to go to any one of those topics, just click on the timestamps here on your screen. You can see those, but first, before we jump into any of the meat of things, I need to let you guys know about something in case you've missed it. Valorant is now officially live on Challenger Mode. The game has taken the esports community by storm, and we're more than happy to make it accessible to players and organizers on the platform. You can read more about which organizers will be hosting Valorant tournaments in the official announcement blog post. There's a link for you in the description below. But for now, let's jump into the meat of things. Let's get down to the patch notes themselves. We're going to start it out with gameplay and balance. Now, the first thing here is the weapons update that applies for every weapon in the game. You'll see you'll no longer enter the walking accuracy state when transitioning from run to stop. Now, this isn't the biggest change. It's not going to make a massive difference to your gameplay. What it does is it makes it a little easier to see when someone's actually running and when they're not. So you might have noticed before players coming around a corner and it looks like they're full sprint and they headshot you. And that's pretty frustrating. But actually for them, they will have stopped. They will have let go of the, of the walking key and they'll all of a sudden be completely accurate. This will make it a little easier to tell whether they're standing still, slowing down or stop or still running at full speed. Dead zone accuracy also got increased the threshold for it. Uh, so you're going to see again, it's, it's a combat. These kind of strafe peaks through just makes you that little bit more accurate uh, when you're stopping. Going down to the rifles to look at specific changes outside of those to again handle a little bit more of that accuracy. You can see the recovery time on every single rifle has been changed, which should make tap and burst firing more efficient. This is actually really important. Uh, you will have seen a lot of players take the Phantom over the Vandal on a pretty consistent basis. And the logic behind it was that a headshot from the Phantom already gave you a little bit of inaccuracy on your opponent. The spray was so easy to control that as long as you're hitting that first shot headshot, you've probably won that duel anyways. With the Vandal, if you missed it, well, you didn't quite have the chance to recover the spray down as easily as with the Phantom, as I'm sure most of you guys will have noticed. Now, though, the Vandal's horizontal yaw recoil has been reduced by 15% while crouched or stationary. Obviously, we're not talking about running and spraying the weapon. If you're doing that, well, you, you deserve the inaccuracy that's coming with it. This is going to make it much easier to spray. Already, I could feel it the second I got into the game that it felt like it actually had a spray control, at least for the first 8 to 10 bullets. And from there, you can actually reset it pretty easily because the gun recovery time has also been reduced only by a fraction of a second, but it does definitely make that difference. More importantly as well, specifically for the Vandal with the one-shot headshot, the tap efficiency has been changed from four to six. That's going to make it much easier to tap away and not really feel the, the recoil as much as you would if you were full spraying, that's for sure. Looking at the Phantom, they fixed an issue where the gun recovery time was higher than intended, so it's just a bug fix. The recovery time was also reduced even further down to 0.35 seconds, and the tap efficiency increased as well. So again, as we said in the initial notes, this should just make it easier to tap and burst the weapon. Bulldog is the same, except not for tap firing. They've only increased the recovery time. So again, if you're firing it in bursts of five bullets or so, you can reset that pretty quickly now and begin again. Hopefully connect that headshot on your next reset. Guardian, again, same thing. Just a lower gun recovery time. Make it easier to fire four bullets and then stop and continue on with that kind of accuracy, not being punished as much. For anyone that has made it to the sixth or seventh bullet of a Guardian, you know what they're trying to avoid. So the next change up is actually a strange one to me. Machine guns. I never have found of these in competitive FPS games. I feel like they can only ever be overpowered or completely pointless. And for me, completely pointless is definitely the way to go. But Valorant are messing around. They're trying to get there. Riot want these weapons to be viable. So they've made a couple changes. The Ares, which already felt like a pretty good gun in all honesty, is now cheaper. Only by 100 credits, but it will make a difference with the new economy changes we'll talk about in just a little bit. 
There's a firing error that's just being fixed out there. It's not the biggest of deals, but you've got a lot of changes to the spray down. If you spray this weapon, I encourage you to go on a custom server and try the Ares. It is so accurate now. Outside of those first eight bullets, it continues to have very little horizontal recoil before it used to go crazy with left to right sprays, much like the Odin, which also faced the same patch now. You can now fire that within a much tighter angle, and this could be really useful. Thinking of the split B sight, if you're holding that, maybe you're a Viper, you've got your orb up, maybe you're a Cypher, maybe a Brimstone is close to smoke it, and they start to push out and make a little bit of noise. Oh baby, you're going to have a good time just spraying that airy straight through. It just feels great. I think they've done a good job with it, but I'm curious to see how the top level teams adapt to it if they start to pick it up more, and I imagine they probably will, especially those solo side holders. I think it's much more useful for holding choke points now than maybe a Vandal is, mainly if you have something to block vision. Because if you stand out in the open, you do have to stand still with it, and it might take a while to connect those. If someone's got a Vandal, they'll probably one-tap you, at least at the higher level. So as I said, the same for the Odin. Reduce the amount of intensity of horizontal recoil after the first eight bullets just to stop it from swinging left and right and hopefully get it into the hands of a couple more players. So that's the end of the weapon changes that came through. But we do also have agent updates. Sage is one of the most important ones. Probably the most. The slow orb has been reduced in the duration that it's got by two seconds. That's a pretty big deal, considering this character obviously is based around healing. At the lowest level, you probably think, well, Sage is about healing. Sure, 100%, but also she slows people down. She blocks off choke points, and when they want to push in, especially if there's like 30 seconds left, if you've still got those Sage orbs in your bag, especially the wall, well, they're going to have a really rough time of getting through with those combined. They've also slowed down or decreased the percentage of slow that it actually gives you. So when you used to full speed walk through a Sage slow orb, it would slow you by 65% and it felt horrible. It's like you're in tar. You basically didn't move in it. But now it's 50%. And it will still give off the noise cue when you walk, but that's actually really helpful now because if you go and try it yourself, 15% doesn't seem like a lot, but you see, you can actually peek corners a little bit with it. I still wouldn't advise it, but if you're in a position where maybe you're going to get pushed inside of it or Whatever it might be. Situationally, it could help out. They also went on to explain how they feel like Sage is OP, which I definitely agree with. And this is their attempt to try and nerf her without reducing too much from her healing or anything or resurrection, certainly. Just taken away from some of those map blocking abilities. Speaking of map blocking abilities, you look at Cypher. His cage no longer slows enemies, and that is huge. Taking that away, I don't know if he's actually going to be picked that much. He's really good with the camera, don't get me wrong, the tripwires are fantastic, but now the cage essentially serves as a spotter, right? It, when you do hit them with the tripwire, you pop the cage so they can't see you, and you spray through. You'll know if there's one, two, three guys pushing your sight. I think the slow was a huge part of that ability, and now it seems a little bit useless. It's not like you're going to put it up in the same way you do a smoke, it just doesn't feel right. I think we're probably going to see a change to the Cypher Cage coming in the future at some point. One interesting change they've also put in is the Spy Cam cooldown when destroyed has increased from 30 to 45 seconds. So if you pull it back, you've still got that 15 second cooldown, but if you do throw it a little bit more aggressively, well, you could lose it for almost the rest of the round, depending on when you're putting it out there. This is going to tighten in the amount of Cypher Cams that you're actually putting through. Uh, in those more aggressive spots because you actually now got punished pretty heavily for it and this is a change i definitely agree with you might be thinking well you don't always need to put them in those risky spots right what about all the glitch spots they're actually patched a lot of them and we'll get to it later in the bug fixes but a lot of the cypher cams are no longer working which is fantastic because we've seen them even used at some top level tournaments uh, manipulated to get them to um see through some walls looking at omen He's up next. Dark cover smoke duration increased. So essentially, they've increased how long his smokes last by three uh, by three seconds, not three percent. That would not be noticeable. 
They've also increased how fast it travels, and that's pretty important as well. Being able to throw those across the map when your teammate asks for them hasn't been in the game so far. If you're playing a different site to your omen and you need to smoke your brimstones out, or maybe you just don't have a brimstone, maybe you're crazy, your omen probably wouldn't be able to help you in time. By the time his smoke gets there, blooms, falls, you're already being pushed down. Now it actually travels really fast. You can feel it. I think he's going to be picked much more because of that, which was their objective, and they definitely accomplished it. And to compensate for how much longer they last, and indeed the uh, speed that they're deployed, it does take an extra five seconds for that cooldown. It's not the worst. I think this is a really good patch for Omen. I'm excited to see how that plays out at the top level. Viper as well, very small ability change from 350 to 450 on Snake Bite Radius. It's going to block off a, a larger period. That's pretty much it. But there was also a change to that alongside the incendiary and the fireball. You can see here Brimstone, Phoenix, and Viper. We see you bee hoppers out there jumping through incendiary, fireball, and snake bite while taking no damage. We don't want to completely negate this skill, but we also don't want it to trivialize a whole set of character abilities. Definitely agree with that. You know, when there was an incendiary down or the snake bite, you could jump through it and not take a whole bunch of damage. But now, the height requirement to jump out of all damaging area denial abilities is 80 to 120. That's really solid from them again. Addressing a concern that wasn't at the forefront of most people's minds. But if you're a Brimstone main, I'm sure it's happening a couple times. You throw the Molotov down and all of a sudden they're the incendiary. All of a sudden they're through it. And you felt like you should have probably done more damage. Now it should. Also, the damage tick speed increased, and it is tangible as well. So the Asian ability credit cost tuning. This is something that's going to change the game completely. Even from the first round, from pistols, you'll see the impact as we read through these. We felt the credit score, or credit cost, excuse me, of some abilities did not match the impact those abilities brought to a match, and made adjustments for a more accurate reflection. First thing on the chop and block is the Sage Barrier Orb. This is increased from 300 to 400. So on the pistol round, Sage can now only afford light armor and a wall. Not a slow alongside it like before. Or a ghost can't get a wall alongside it now. That forces Sage into a much more supportive role. Not having a ghost bought up. And also not being able to drop a ghost to a teammate if she does go for the wall with no armor. I think probably the most common thing we'll see is the wall and armor. Bought up by Sage players. Rage Blast Pack increased from 100 to 200 credits again just going to stop rays from spamming those away reducing damage dealing abilities and also her ability to spring through into more aggressive positions whether it's height or horizontal wise i think this is a good change so that they're not being spammed every single round phoenix curveballs 100 percent they're from 100 to 200 credits indeed increased 100 percent, but that's not what i was going for I think taking these and treating them as a much more expensive piece of utility is something that was desperately needed. You just, if you're playing against a Phoenix, or if you've played as a Phoenix, you know every single round you're buying curveballs, even if it's an eco. Why not? Now that's going to be a little bit harder to do. They're not as spammable. Definitely feel the hurt to your economy. And again, alongside the changes we'll be talking about to the economy in a little bit. Brimstone's incendiary, so it's going to be a little bit more efficient as we discussed before because now they can't bunny hop through it as much and the tick rate is increased. But also the cost is increased to make it a little bit harder to get out from 200 to 300 credits. Jet's updraft reduced from 200 to 100 credits. As much as I hate jet mains, <laughs> we fall played with them in casual, unfortunately, but I think this is a good call. Updraft already has punishments to it when you go up. I'm sure, if you're in your ultimate, that's different, but if you've got your ult, you're not going to worry about spending 200 versus 100. It doesn't happen enough uh, to have that kind of impact. So, this ability punishes you because you've got to get your gun back out. You've probably got to land as well somewhere before you're actually able to be accurate. So, you're in the air for a couple seconds. Now, it's going to cost 100, so you can spam it a little bit more. And alongside the fact that you can't exactly... It's not like a, a curveball flashbang that you can throw around a corner. You're exposing yourself and putting yourself in vulnerable spots to get it. So, I think that's a fair change. Armor carried over from prior rounds is no longer destroyed when new armor is purchased, allowing you to sell newly purchased armor and return to your previous armor status. So to put that simply, if you have 40 armor in the bank, 
you accidentally, just out of habit, click on buy 50, well, now you could just sell it and you'll get 40 back. Instead of what used to happen, you'd spend 1,000 for that extra 10, you'd sell it, and you'd be on zero. So that, that is a good change, definitely. Here's a huge one. Max credit cap. The total credit cap is reduced from 12,000 to 9,000. That's going to have a huge impact on competitive games, especially. When we see teams getting away with a 5-6-0 start, it's so hard to come back in because you can't force them down to an eco. They've got so much money again and again alongside some of the abilities that were already cheaper. This is now going to play out as a really interesting economy. We will see teams make comebacks a little bit better. We'll see teams punished for hunting down weapons or for losing two or three players as they're defending, especially with the abilities costing more. This was much needed because it felt like the economy was very trivial in the game so far, and they've addressed that fantastically. Character updates. Uh, it's only got Sova in there. It's just the L drone, a bit of a sound cue. Not the biggest of deals. That might make it a little bit easier to hear the drone. That's it. I'm from a spectator perspective as well. Map updates. Oh my. Have they done a work on split. I heard some people immediately that I was queuing with saying that they ruined it. I disagree. They've changed it from a very, very defensive sided map. I mean, you might not have experienced it yourself. Maybe you've got a, a mid defense that is questionable. But you put a Sage on mid, you put good players that can aim, Brimstones are around there to slow them down, man, it is impossible to attack. You have to figure out how they're playing middle, and at top level, we have seen Split be so heavily defensive sided. That's not the case anymore. These changes, we're going to run down through them one at a time, but they are huge. They're making it much easier for the attackers to get into the A-bomb site and the B-bomb site. So attacking teams have been having difficulty finding a foothold in territory control across the map. We've made a few changes that should allow characters better opportunities to contest A main, mid top, and B tower. So the first change is the barrier locations, those blue clear walls. You know them, the ones that you knife at the start of every round. I know what you're doing. They've been adjusted across the map, and the main one is in middle. They've pulled it back a little bit. Now, you might think, well, it doesn't matter. Usually, I would hold inside those doorways anyways. I wouldn't be standing in the middle of, of mid. True. Let's say you're a cypher. You can't put down your tripwire until the start of the round. They can now see it and destroy it. They can hear it as well. Let's. Say, you also can't get a cam out there, right? You can't be in position to throw one out. Sage, you're under a little bit more time pressure to pop down your wall. To pre-pop it. You can't just rush down middle. It's going to slow down mid rushes as attackers as well. My favorite strategy playing Sage was to wall off the right side at the very start of the round before they could do anything about it. Now, that's not quite the case. They can actually get out and maybe catch me with my wall orb still in hand. Defender barrier has been pulled back at a ramps. So it's just going to make it a little bit longer for defenders to get there. And it's been pushed forward for the attackers. Again, this is to change up the positions that are being contested and make it a little bit harder for defenders to hold down at the very beginning of the round. Maybe commit more utility towards it, which costs more, and you've less money as a, a max cap. Again, this is going to make the game really interesting when it comes to the late rounds because you're going to have to treat that utility and abilities, as we call them, much, much as if they're much more valuable because they are. The attack barrier being pushed forward to A main. Attack barrier pushed forward slightly at B main. It is a very slight adjustment, but again, it will help just fine-tuning those couple seconds and in getting into garage and contesting there. Uh, the only thing now that I think can beat you is probably an omen TPing to the left side as you run through. This one was huge. An angle They angled the wall on the left. So when you're coming from middle towards B, you're walking up those steps. On the left side, there is usually a corner. And there's also a corner on the right. Now, when you walk through that doorway, you have to check one of those two angles. They could have a crossfire, or there could be a player on either one. But it's a 50-50. If you look left and he's right, you're dead. You look right and he's left, you're dead. And best case scenario, you look left, he's there, you take a fight. Maybe he's even got a buddy behind him. It can go wrong in a lot of ways. Now the left wall is curved. So you no longer need to walk through the doorway to clear the left. 
You now know he's not there when you get to the top of stairs, and you can swing out and clear the angles systematically, which is really important. For competitive FPS, you want to be able to walk through a doorway and clear this angle, then this angle, then this angle. And there was always the possibility to commit utility towards the left side. You could molly the left corner, but... I mean, this just makes more sense to make the map a little bit easier and more systematic to clear. As they said, this removes a 50-50 angle check when pushing into this space, which should make it more approachable for you to try and gain control of B Tower. 100% agree. Great change. I wouldn't have even thought of that exact one, so fair play to Riot for that. Also, down on the B bomb site, the Radionite crate in B has been changed to metal. This is just to stop people wall banging it as easily and give you a little bit more cover. I'm sure a lot of us have planted behind that box and had someone come from spawn where our teammates can't see them and spam us to death. They also revised art to improve performance throughout the map. I don't think I've noticed that so far, uh, but I've got a pretty beefy PC, so I wouldn't humble brag. Uh, but hell, good to see that they're making some performance changes. Haven. Nothing really. Uh, a new map exploit system. You know, we saw a lot of omens and sage used together to get outside of the map. That won't be happening anymore. There's the new exploit system, which I presume just kills you or at least deals significant damage. Although I guess it just kills you. And updates on floors so they have the appropriate material sound. Not the biggest of deals. Split slash haven slash bind. Changes to all three of these maps, but not big ones. It is added fixes for cypher spy camera exploits which we were talking about earlier to all three maps this means that you'll no longer find cameras that can see through walls or you can't see or any of that sort of stuff and it's just a list of which ones backside of spawn barriers are now opaque to prevent some abuse cases added ability for spike to automatically fall from elevated boost positions so if you've played with jet that insta-lock jet main that you find in your solo queues or maybe just as the fifth player to your four-man. Yeah, they can't just leave the bomb on top of a box anymore. It will fall down. This is a good change. One of us in particular kept doing that, not looking at anyone in our corner. And <laughs> it happened once in all fairness. But Fix multiple spots where Sova's recon dart could overpenetrate map geometry. The only one of these I immediately noticed is on split a site. Uh, I made a video about this a while back where you could throw a recon dart onto the back of a billboard and it would see straight through it. There was no way they could see it. They could wall bang it, but they'd have to guess where it was and you'd probably get at least one scan, see if they're outside A. Can't do it anymore. Good change overall. I'm guessing they found a lot more. Uh, there was actually a second one, which was also on the A site where you could throw it off the map and it would still register through the wall. I don't know if they fixed that. I will check that and I guess update you on Twitter at Mitchman. Or uh, no, at Mitchman. <laughs> we got it changed. I forgot about that. Anyways, that was supposed to be a, a quick plug. The challenger mode wouldn't notice, but now they will. HUD and UI. Okay, so we're on to HUD. This is the interesting part of things for me as a commentator. I work with this a lot. There's been some challenges, let's put it that way, but we won't get into that. Well, maybe we will as we go through the notes. Teammate armor is now shown on the scoreboard. This is for everybody. This is important. We use it on the broadcast. We open the scoreboard to see who has what weapon because there's no sidebars like in some other, like most other games, but it is in beta, so this happens. Uh, you'll now be able to see basically what your teammates have in terms of armor mid-round. When the spike is planted, the spike icon in the upper middle UI now pulses with the audio beeps. Makes it a little easier to tell how close it is to blowing up. Maybe your headset doesn't pick it up from far away. Certainly I know this one versus the ones I use for gaming. Completely different. It sounds super quiet in these, super loud in that. This will help you to just look in the middle, see the beeps, and know exactly how far along it is. New artwork for pings to increase readability in the world. That's actually a really big change because I found some of them really hard to see before. Like, I think it was on, on my way, with, blended in with a lot. Now it stands out a little bit more, which is great. Portraits! Portraits, finally! So now on the minimap, you can see which player is where. You can see where the Sage is, where your Brimstone is. This made an immediate impact to me in playing the game. Just knowing which character was where, it's huge. But also for broadcast. We couldn't tell. It was just all the attackers were red, all the defenders were blue. We didn't know who was playing where. You had to kind of remember, 
okay, this is Jammies, he plays middle, something like that. That's no longer the case. We can just look at the agent on the map and tell who's there. That's great. It's going to improve things a lot for my day-to-day -day life. So reduce size of portraits as well. And actually, I feel like they've done a great job because I didn't notice they were smaller, but they do take up less space. They feel better. The character portraits itself look good. And you can tell which one you are immediately. <laughs> I love the attitude they put into these as well. Added color to the player's own minimap icon with a slightly thicker border to aid in finding oneself on the minimap, not in life. Unfortunately, you'll still have to go somewhere else for your spiritual guidance. Riot are not providing that as of yet, but we're not ruling anything out for the future. Added regulation of chat messages when using the radio menu so you can't spam voice lines, basically. Uh, not a lot of these are huge, but moved leave match button closer to the exit buttons in the menu. That's a really big one because I don't know if you guys, alongside the logout one, they've made it red. I couldn't find the leave match for ages when I started. I logged out of the game instead of leaving a server so many times. Um, <laughs> this is nice that they've actually addressed that. Shift the location of skip button on the MVP screen so you're not accidentally pressing play again when spamming skip. Fair enough. Adjusted radio wheel behavior, so the mouse wheel up and down always selects the other wheels regardless of key binds, so you're not jumping or something. Um, icon for help needed, change for little bug, enable attack defend icons. Uh, it, it's not the biggest of deals again. Hooked up ult almost ready voice line uh, when character uses the ult status radio command and are within one ult point. Again, not, not huge. Quality of life, uh, a lot of these are trivial, like cheaters are no longer referred to as hackers. Okay, I guess, <laughs> I don't I don't really know how that helps, but you do you, right? You do you. Profanity filter setting added uh, when enabled will filter out profanity from chat. I seem to have that disabled by default, but my teammates all have it enabled by default. I don't know what that was about. Added a setting that allows toggling between walking and running. Again, certain people prefer it. I know it caused more problems for me. Big one here. Viper's Poison Cloud no longer enters cooldown when picked up during the buy phase. If you're a Viper main, especially if you're playing split and throwing that cheeky Viper orb on mid, it'll now be a little bit easier to do. I'll be able to pick it up and throw it down again and again. Added foe coloring for Sova's Hunter's Fury. Finally. No longer can your teammates tell you it wasn't them that shot you, it was the enemy, now you know. So when when Sova pops his ult, it will go red. You'll see it lining up red, you'll see the blast red, you will know that it's not your teammates, and that is huge. Added contract level up animation when unlocking free characters or purchasing contract levels, fair enough. Added tool tips and explanations uh, guiding new players towards activating their first contract. Again, that's pretty crucial. I know there was a lot of confusion around the contracts. Did you have to play that character to start doing the contract? Which obviously didn't make sense. If you're playing, if you have an unlocked omen, you can do the omen contract to unlock him. Uh, people thought you had to play the same agent. Unknown skin levels. Now list their individual cost in Radiant points. That's for like the Vandal, for example. If you've got the Vandal looks before you buy it, you can see what it's going to cost to level up to each different tier. Made performance optimization to address FPS, FPS drops when you or allies are, are shooting. It also happened with some Viper walls as well, if I remember correctly. Some of my teammates were experiencing huge drops in frames from that, but that's fixed now, which is good to see. Various social panel improvements to support better error handling and messaging. Keep player centered minimap setting is now a default setting. I agree with that one. Feels good. Um, and you can change it if you like. Rename first person enhanced visuals graphics setting to bloom. That's good because I had no idea what first person enhanced visuals was. <laughs> now I know it's bloom. It's off. Uh, Rename shadows graphics setting to first person shadows. Again, fair enough, because I left shadows on thinking that well, I want to see their shadow if they're coming around the corner, right? Observer hood. Dead players will now appear grayed out on the hood rather than hidden, which is good again. And team colors on the hood will always swap when switching side rather than the teams on the hood changing position. Again, really nice change. It means we don't have to keep swapping over overlays. There's a lot of bug fixes, so Cypher and Sova will no longer float in the air if the Sage Barrier Orb 
wall. It's so weird to me to call it the sage wall. Uh, they're standing on this destroyed while using the spy cam or L drone, respectively. I didn't even see that bug, so fair enough. <laughs> I don't, I don't play Sova, and I've never been walled as a cipher, I guess. Cypher can no longer, or I never check my camera when I'm on a wall. He can no longer pick up his trap after an enemy has triggered it. I didn't know he could do that. I missed that bug as well. I mean, there's a whole bunch of bugs here, but I'll just pick the important ones. Reduced collision size on Sova's arrow so they don't get stuck on corners when fired near them. That annoyed me a lot. I started this game out maining Sova and definitely something that i'm glad to see fixed removed placeholder mesh from viper's toxic screen projectile again really solid improvements being made when using the ping wheel on the map right clicking now correctly cancels the action and does not place a ping again thank you that's nice <laughs> i mean how many times you try to cancel a ping and you just keep on popping them and there's just there's a lot of bugs being fixed a lot of them are minor there'll be things that you've probably come across once at most being irritated with them and then you know, it's fixed. You never come into it again, really. And game client bug fixes as well to round things out just to make things a little bit easier to get in. Any performance issues with old, older graphics cards and stuff like that. That's pretty much all the changes. And man, there are a lot. This is a huge update. When I heard there was a Valorant update, I was ready to skim through the patch notes again. There'd been one right before I did a tournament and it was, it was whatever. But this one definitely took a long time. I mean, I was scrolling for ages, reading down through this, taking little notes on each one, how it's going to change. I've got a tournament in, what, two days? So, <laughs> got a little bit more research to do on how the teams are adapting to them. But in terms of the economy, I think that's going to be the biggest change that we see. And now that the abilities cost more, now that you can't build up as much money and split not being as defense-sided, hopefully we'll see it picked a little bit more as well. I'd say it'll frustrate teams at the start because they just started to figure out how to play the map on attack a little bit, how to build up those rounds, figure out how the teams are playing mid and exploit them, and now they've got to go back to square one and <laughs> figure out how to do it again. But the actual mid control itself hasn't changed so much, just the spawn times. But it does limit some of the things, as I mentioned. But that's it. We're finished the patch breakdown, so... It's been a pleasure taking you through this one. This is our first attempt at this, so let us know what you thought. Go down to the comments. Tell us if you liked it. If you didn't, what can we do differently next time? Did you like our little tweaks, our little UI changes as we went throughout our in-game footage? What can we do to make you happy? That's what we want to know. And guys, of course, if you want to catch more of this content, subscribe to the Challenger Mode YouTube channel. Uh, we got lots more educational esports content coming your way across a whole host of games, not just Valorant, but there will be more Valorant. I promise you that. If you want more personalized coaching, check out my listing on the esports marketplace, the Challenger Mode esports marketplace. I'm Mitchman. You can follow me at Mitchman on Twitter if you want to catch more information across a bundle of titles that I do. And without further ado, I'll thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Thanks, folks. Okay, okay. I can wall off tongue. Oh. I'm ulting mid. Open up the sky! <laughs> <laughs>